지금 보시는 이 로봇은 걸을 수도 있고 날 수도 있고 스케이트보드도 심지어 줄타기도 합니다 이족보행을 하는 로봇들은 굉장히 많이 발전 중입니다 그리고 드론은 이제 우리에게 친숙하죠 하지만 지금까지 걸을 수도 있고 비행할 수도 있는 로봇은 없었습니다 So it's the first robot that truly integrates the walking and the flying. It's, it's not just a drone with legs. 이 로봇의 이름은 레오나르도입니다. 레그스 온보드 드론을 줄였다고 합니다. Why is this potentially useful? Yeah, so any uh, flying vehicles actually have to start from the ground to take off. And eventually, they cannot stay in the air forever. They have to eventually come down. But sometimes they have to come down on the very challenging terrain or some obstacles. So it's actually a good idea to have these controllable legs so they can actually land in a very uh, interesting configuration of posture or orientation. 이 외에도 더 많은 장점이 있습니다. 이런 로봇들은 일반 드론들보다 훨씬 더 안정적입니다. I view these propellers almost like a, a arm. So some people might say that, oh, you guys are cheating because, I mean, bipedal robots do not have a propellers. But we are essentially using the propellers to do additional stabilization. 이 팬들의 위력을 한번 느껴보시죠. Right, 연구원들은 레오다르도를 이곳에서 테스트합니다. 여러 바람이 부는 곳에서도 안정적인지 확인하는 거죠. 레오나르도는 매우 안정적이고 균형을 잘 잡아서 무려 스케이트보드도 탈수 있다고 합니다. 
So we went to the first shop and we bought a skateboard, we modified it and we tried it and it worked. So do you think it allows the robot to save energy by riding on a skateboard? It's more efficient because it uses the legs less. The legs are basically used to steer and then it's just the propellers that are used to accelerate the skateboard forward and backwards. So yeah, it, it, it makes it save a bit more energy. Propeller를 가지고 뒤로 가는 이 모습을 보세요. 대릭은 절대 저렇게 못 합니다. I definitely would, would help if I had a propeller. 이 중에서 제일 재밌는 건 줄타기입니다. <웃음> this looks incredibly unstable. So I think this proves the point of just like how important control systems are. 영상을 보시면 알겠지만 아무것도 못 합니다. <laughs> All right. I thought I would be slightly better at that. Let's give it another shot. Okay. <laughs> Can anyone slack line? <sighs> oh, this is impossible. I need a robot to do this for me. I like the sidestepping technique. Maybe I should have been doing that. I'm trying to like copy his technique. Leonardo의 움직임을 보면서 팁을 좀 얻으려 했지만 효과는 별로 없었습니다. I should have prepared. 프로펠러를 사용하는 게 꼼수라고 생각하실 수도 있는데요. 일단 로봇은 분명히 날고 있지 않습니다. 완전히 줄에 지탱하고 있고 프로펠러로 줄 위에 서 있는 걸 안정되게 하고 있는 거죠. So human professional slackliner, if you see some their videos, actually they use the arm stretch and then they can balance themselves. Uh, we don't have the arms for Leo yet. Uh, we are planning to add the manipulation uh, so that it can actually carry some object. But in the meantime, we are using the propellers to stabilize the Leo while it's actually walking on a slack line. It's funny because like the robot feels like it's got kind of a personality to it, yeah. the way it walks and flies. Yeah, right. It's just totally something you're not used to seeing. Yeah, it looks natural. Actually, I have to say that the sensors are sampled at 1,000 times per second. But the controller is actually being uh, recomputed. Uh, whatever signal you're sending to propellers and the leg joints, 200 times per second. So it's a pretty fast like a computation. 200 times a second, it is adjusting what it's doing yes. to maintain balance. Yes, like especially propeller uh, control signal. How does that compare to humans? Uh, humans. <laughs> so humans can do very sophisticated tasks, but in terms of uh, like a fast reaction, it's a very crude machine. So uh, humans in uh, overall has a few seconds of delay, time delay. Is this why I was struggling on the slack line? Well, maybe, but... Uh, <laughs> How do you feel about the performance here today? Yeah, I think it beat you. <laughs> I mean, not that that's hard, but this is very impressive. If you imagine a robot like Leonardo in the future, like the greatest Leonardo you could make, what would that robot look like and do? So definitely having a Leo-like robot in space, that would be amazing. But of course, depending on where you go, you might not be able to use propellers. So then you would need to use thrusters. So eventually, yes, we want to develop this leg-based adaptive landing gear, and then we give that to next generation Mars helicopter or next generation flying cars so that it can actually land in very challenging conditions. And still move around once it's yeah, and then once yeah, once you land, then you can walk over it. Imagine if you have a cliff, and then you have the robot just jump out of the cliff, deploy the propellers, and fly. That'd be wild. 